Yo, ladies and gentlemen, welcome into my channel. If you're watching this, you're either hyper dedicated to, to me and the community that we've gathered here on my channel, which doesn't normally do reviews, or you're looking for a review on this new Ness outdoor battery camera. Either way, appreciate y'all coming in. I like making reviews, right? I like making tech reviews. I like making unboxings, but that's not what my channel's about. But most recently, I had a very serious crime happen on my property. Someone actually stole my vehicle. So in my mind, I was like, oh, it's probably time to get some cameras. That being said, I did research and I landed on these bad boys right here, the Nest Cam. I got the two pack from Best Buy. They were on sale like $90 off, $80 off. I landed on these for a couple of different reasons. This right here is the two pack of the battery powered ones, which is huge and we'll get into that. And there's one downfall to these, which I do think I have a solution for. And I used the old Gen 1 Nest Cams before Nest was purchased by Google. So I'm fairly familiar with how they work but I'm excited to get into this. Let's go ahead and unbox it. Again, not a professional unboxer. That's not what I do on this channel. So we're gonna unbox it like a normal Joe Blow. So I'm opening these things like you would open them and I'm reviewing in a real world experience like you would as well. Now this box is mad heavy. I'm assuming because there's two in here. I did feel the actual product at Best Buy when I purchased these and it's actually pretty heavy. Like, like the camera itself is pretty, it, like it feels of quality because of the weight. Now, as I struggle with the suction of this, this is the thing that would be cut out of NKBHD's video and Unbox Therapy's video. But this is real world right here, baby. This is what we go through. All right, I might have to cut it just for time's sake. Okay, see, this is that. This is what I'm talking about. Y'all, I don't know if y'all can see it on this camera, but on this camera, there's literally a piece of tape right there holding it together. That's on me, dog. <laughs> oh, bro. Why was that so difficult? This is the camera right here. We got two cameras, clearly. Mounting bracket, charging cable, and USB. I kind of wish this was USB-C just because that's the way that the world is going. From what I read, you got to charge these things on an average occasion every three months, maybe every two and a half months, which is really not bad. You probably charge it for a couple of hours and then you're good. Um, I think the more events that you have, the more you have to charge it because then it actually starts working actively versus passively. Get started manual, obviously, that would help. And then lastly, two mounting screws two anchors this is much nicer quality than the uh than the generation one indoor camera is and the outdoor version only comes in battery form and one of the only downfalls of the battery version of the camera and this is one of the main complaints that i saw on best buy's website one of the main complaints i saw on youtube reviews if you want to see live feed 24 7 and you want continuous recording because it only records events quote unquote so basically whenever something comes into frame whatever you set your zone to if there's movement in that zone it'll record it you can look in on the camera live but you only have recorded events for the past i forgot how many months it is the only way to record 24 7 in order to preserve the battery life is to have it plugged in this plug would work the only problem with this plug is that it's mad short so what i had seen everybody do is that they sell like a 10 foot 30 foot 20 foot cable i don't know necessarily how long it is but you plug it in and then you run it through the outside of your house and you plug it into the camera and then that is what allows the camera to be on 24 7 but I'm assuming if you're like me, wires, you hate them. So what I got also at Best Buy, and I didn't even know that they had this, we got, we got a Wazertine solar panel made exclusively and for the purpose of using as your Google Nest power source. So basically what you do is you mount the camera and you take this bad boy and you mount it right next to it like this on the wall. And then the solar panel connects to the cable right here. And then you're always getting continuous power. Now this right here, this cost me about 60 bucks, 50 bucks. I forgot exactly how much I paid for it. But in the grand scheme of things, since you have to buy the mag long cable separately, that cable for the nest is like, it's like 35, 40 bucks. I can afford the extra $20 in order to have a sleek packaging and not have wires running all along my house and all of that. I'm excited to see how those work. Those had like a 4.6 out of five rating on best buy so that's a pretty solid rating first off we go to the google home app we hit plus set up device new devices for my home here we are what are you setting up the camera what are you setting up nest cam outdoor indoor battery which is the one that i have scan the qr code to set up device need to get permission for the camera good to go scanned it boom nest cam battery next oh it recognized it as plugged in this camera is going to be outdoor Choose Wi-Fi network, device ready. Let's get it. 
But while we're waiting, like I said, the camera is only capable of recording uh, events because it saves and preserves battery life. If you actually don't care about anything but the events happening, then there's no need to buy the solar panels and there's no need to buy the cable. The battery on the camera should last up to three months. You save yourself 50 to 100 bucks basically by not having to buy solar panels or the cables. And there we are, ladies and gentlemen. What you're looking at is me. Here's my hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the other camera, then install them and then see what kind of features we have after. Let's go do that. that's really it that's it was literally that simple to set up these two cameras and install them and make sure that they're working properly it already is recording the events it was logging me every time that i walked in and out of frame i didn't show it for time's sake of this video but i did install one of these really all that it takes is you take this two holes into your drywall or into wherever you're going to put it make sure it has a couple hours direct sunlight a day the thing about this is that it does not it does not charge your battery all the way up. And that's something that was important to me because once you charge batteries to their 100 percent, they start to lose quality of the battery and the life the lifespan of the battery goes down. So this literally only charges to 70 percent to save your battery, which is crazy. I didn't even think that that was going to be one of the features of the solar panel when I bought it. This guy forever doing this. Out you go till I'm done recording. Now, I know some of y'all are thinking, man, is Ernest getting paid for this? All he's saying is nothing but good. I wish. I really do wish. But I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all some of the negatives. And not really negatives, just drawbacks in my mind. First one, you have to charge these cameras in order for them to last three months. But the two-pack only came with one charger. I'm not too pressed about it because I planned on running this anyway. But if you're not someone who plans on doing that and you just want to charge them, you have to charge one at a time or you have to go and get, go and get another charger. And I know that's the way the tech world works these days, but still annoying. The second thing that can kind of be seen as a downfall is that once the camera is removed from the base, it stops recording. It's not like it keeps recording while the camera is off of the base. It literally tells you that in order to record or return back to live video, you have to remount it. So if someone comes along and jacks it, like that's it, the camera stops right there. It doesn't, it doesn't keep recording with them. Now there are theft deterrent cables that you can purchase, but again, it's another added purchase on top of the cameras. A third thing that could be seen as a downfall, and it's not really a downfall per se, it's just an annoyance, I guess, because I'm used to the original Nest app before it got bought out and you have to transfer to Google Home. Google Home does not show you the cameras on the very first screen. You have to go into cameras and then go and turn them all on separately, or you can hit this turn on button, turn all cameras on. But I would much prefer it if I decided that I wanted to see the cameras up front. As soon as I hit the Google Home app, it shows all cameras that are available and they all turn on. Like, why do I have to go and manually turn on every single camera if I want to see the live feed? Again, just an annoyance, not going to make or break the deal. It's still one of the most seamless camera setups that I've ever had. But I'll be more than grateful if they decide that they want to make it to where the cameras can be seen as soon as you start the app. And I just covered the basics. You could deep dive into the Google and Nest Aware if you want to. You can set up facial recognition so it recognizes people's faces. You can set up family members and they have their own apps. Obviously integrate it with your entire Google Home. You can, there's, there's all kinds of different things that you can do, but this was just for the setup and the initial review. And outside of those initial cons or negatives or annoyances, I would say that this is more than worth purchasing, especially coming from the first generation Nest before they were acquired by Google. And especially if you plan on purchasing something like this, by the way, this cable is mad long, so you don't have to necessarily mount it directly right next to it. You can run this all the way to your roof if you want to, but I would say that this is over 10 feet maybe exactly at 10 feet. If you purchase this, I think it eliminates one of the biggest, one of the biggest drawbacks and complaints about the fact that you cannot turn it on 24 seven. And if you don't have this, that means if you want 24 seven, you have to run the cable along your house and plug it in on the interior of your house. But other than that, guys, I appreciate y'all guys watching this. I hope I helped, especially with the solar panel. I hope y'all guys got some entertainment out of this, some info. If y'all decide that y'all wanna purchase this because of me, let me know in the comments. I don't have an affiliate link or anything like that, but 
I like helping people. I like I like breaking it down in a normal sense so it doesn't seem so professional, like a tech reviewer. You're like, oh shit, if Ernest can do it, then I can definitely do it too. But other than that, I'll catch y'all guys on the next review, on the next music review, on the next video. Subscribe if you want to, or the next tech review. Y'all guys have a great day. Catch y'all later.